Hi, ladies. So this is Heather, and um, today what I wanted to do, I'm super, super excited. We actually have a guest star that's going to be joining us out of Connecticut. This is Jenny Garrison Harrison. Hello, uh, ladies. She is a multi-million dollar team leader that has been in the business for many, many, many years. She and I have had the pleasure of working together um, for quite some time, both with Slower Parties and now, of course, with Pure Romance. And the reason that I have brought her in for you girls is because... Um, I think that our team is growing to a point where not only do I need help as a leader, but I think you girls that are growing your own multi-million dollar organizations are, are going to need help as well. And so adding some structure, um, the sooner the better, is going to make such a difference. I wish that I had um, done this before the, the team kind of monumentally exploded. But the good news is as your team grows – that you can always make adjustments as needed like I am. So what we're gonna do is kind of jump into um, how Jenny structures her team, um, especially her first downline, and uh, please feel free to take notes, you can fire questions to me, you can fire questions to Jenny, and then we'll kind of go from there. So, Jenny, thank you for joining Yay! me. Hey, welcome, welcome ladies to the chat. I'm super excited that Heather asked me to do this. I know that I had a ton of aha moments in Las Vegas, and this was one of them. And this is actually something that I used to do with my team a hundred years ago, and I stopped an adult moment, you know, like, oh, why did I ever stop doing this? So I'm super excited to be reintroducing it to you, and I can't wait to hear what kind of questions you guys have, and hopefully it helps you launch your team into astronomical orbit, and you guys have killer teams in sales, and I'm so excited for all of you. So, um, do you mind telling us briefly a little bit about your history as a leader? Absolutely. So, I uh, started Pure Romance, or Slumber Parties, back in December of 2003, and I became the equivalent of what I believe, and Heather helped me out here, is our um, senior director position in the first year, which was Diamond back then. Yeah. I did that in less than a year. And back then that was unheard of. Today that would be like nothing, but back then I was pretty excited. So I saw the value of building my team really quickly, very early. I did work a full-time job at Goodwin College. I was also a realtor for Coldwell Banker and I was top 10 in my office. So I wasn't like a chump realtor, just like warming up a desk. And I was working on a master's of business. So I needed a system that was going to allow me to train my team quickly and efficiently and still continue to grow the team. I find a lot of women you start building and especially if you have a day job, it just cripples you. You don't know what to do with people you get frustrated, you stop recruiting, you kind of throw in the towel. So I need a system that would be really easy to replicate for everyone on the team as well. And I found Belinda Ellsworth's uh, Power Hour for Leaders, and that is what I started using. And it was amazing. Our team um, was just growing and growing from the very first year of business. And um, it's been really helpful for my team to hear it because, as I said, I got away from it, and now we're back to it. And we are seeing growth now at every level, which is really exciting. Okay, so let me just clarify because I don't even mm -hmm. know that I knew this. You had three jobs, and you were a full-time student at the same That's time. Correct. And I, when I started Slumber Party, so it always kills me when people say that they don't have time. Girl, you have time, okay? You just gotta want to make the time. So yeah, I did. I had a lot of things going on when I started. And I then think, you had a recent significant change. Yeah, yeah. I quit my day jobs in 2010 because I wanted to be a mom. I went down the IVF path, which was really heart wrenching and stressful. But I still continue to. Run my business. I didn't let it cripple me. And so exciting! In December of last year, we became parents. Finally, I have an eight-month-old daughter. Her name is Olivia, and she is just a joy. A joy. I don't want to start crying because I love her so much, and I am so thankful that I have my business so I can spend every waking moment with her. It's very exciting. She is a joy. It's not just yeah. you. It's her mom. She's a delight. She's yeah. adorable. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Here you are, all these years in business, you're now full-time, uh, you've gone from being a crazy lady with all of these jobs to full-time mom and mega team manager, So, uh, plus a corporate trainer for the company. So how are you structuring your team so that everybody feels like they're getting a piece of you, but you feel like you're not um, constantly working? Okay. So let me just say this, um, up until about last mid last year, 
I was to have the mindset of I'm the leader and everyone is on my team and I'm making money on everyone. So I'm going to help as much as I can and I'm going to try to juggle everything and help everyone. Well, the reality is that's not sustainable. Um, I, especially after Olivia was born, found that I was uh, tired, I was frustrated, I was spending enormous amounts of time on things that I really shouldn't have been spending time on. So I looked for a way to dial it back um, and to also remind myself why I got into this business and why I love this business. And the reality is it was training and it's team building and helping women. And that's why you all got in this business because you love the products, you love to help women, you love everything you do about this business. What I found when I pulled my team was a lot of them felt like they weren't getting me. They weren't getting Jenny Harrison. And my first down life especially felt that way. And they signed up with me, right? So that's not fair to them. So I, you know, like I said, I dialed it back. And what I've decided to do is I work solely with my first downline now. Am I there for my second, third, and fourth? Absolutely. I absolutely am if they need me. But my goal is to train and empower my first leader, downline leaders and team so that they can take the system, replicate it with their team, and they're teaching their team the same thing. And then everybody's happy. You know, when someone signs with you, they sign because they want you every day, all day, right? And if you're too busy helping your third, your fourth, your fifth, and your tenth, um, it really takes away from the family environment that you're trying to create with your team. And, you know, you're going to lose really great people that you don't want to lose. And when you teach them the system that I'm about to teach you, you're also empowering them to uh, lead their own team and become wonderful leaders themselves and build their family, so to speak. And that's ultimately what everybody wants is to have their own team and be as wildly successful as the top women in the company are. I agree. Okay. Okay. So that being the case, um, have you had any kickback from those in your second, third, and fourth because of this? So far? No, I have not. <laughs> so I'm knocking on wood. Um, no, I have not. And I really truly believe that is because my first downline really did want to be leaders. They really wanted to take care of their team. And they're so excited to be doing it. Um, it makes them, you know, it's empowering to, to know that you're taking care of your team and it's, they're, they're your little babies, you know, and they're the mamas, but you know, you want to lead, you don't want to manage. And that's what the system is about too. It's teaching them how to lead and then they can teach their team how to lead. Managing and leading are two totally different things. Um, and it's super important that people know that and this system teaches them that. Love it. Love the distinction between okay. that. You're absolutely right. Okay. So tell me how you are. Uh, dividing up or working with your team as far as your first downline goes because clearly you've got girls that have been in business and, and with you almost since day one who have completely different needs than the girls who have been in for a year or the girls who have been in for a minute and a half so tell us what you're doing with them absolutely so as I said before this is based on um, Belinda's L Ellsworth's uh, power hour for leaders so there's four different ways to break your team up so the first one is going to be new consultants. The second folder is going to be um, business builders. The third is going to be future leaders. And then the last is going to be leaders. Okay. So I'm saying folders. I actually have Facebook groups for each of these groups of women. And I don't use folders anymore. I'm the kind of person, the more folders I have, the more I lose things. So I actually go on to the COO when I am talking to someone. So let's say Heather's on my team. I'm talking to her. I go right into her contact and I keep notes right in the COO. Okay. On every single person I talk to, everything is in one place. If corporate needed to reference it for some reason, it's there. Okay. And it's dated. It's awesome. So definitely use that sidebar. But so new consultants, business builders, future leaders and leaders. So who goes in your new consultant folder? First question, right? So your new consultant folder is the girls that have been in for 90 days or less. So for those of you that are, have been in the business for a while and you're just implementing the system, 90 days or less, those are the girls you want to put in there. Okay. This is really where you should be spending most of your time. You want to make sure these girls are launching. Okay. You know, a lot of coaches say you should be spending most of your time with your new people and your top producers. Those are the two groups of people that should be getting the most amount of your attention. And I agree with that to an extent, okay? We're gonna talk about that in a minute. So new consultants, 90 days or less. 
Next is your business builders. Your business builders is anyone that's been in over 90 days. Um, maybe they've been in a year. Maybe they only have one or two people underneath them. They're not really doing a ton, but they're your steady eddies. That's the best way to describe them, okay? They're the ladies that have a full-time job. They're hobbying, um, but they're not new people anymore. They don't need all the brand new information, all right? Your third group is your future leaders. Now, your future leaders, uh, for me, is anyone that's a senior consultant that does not yet have five or six people on her team, okay? So these are the girls that get the most discouraged. These are the girls that we can lose in a heartbeat, all right, if something were to go wrong with them. Because what happens? And Heather can speak to this. You guys get so focused on hitting your next level, whether it's director, senior director, whatever it is, that you give up, right? If something goes wrong or somebody drops off your team, you give up, you want to throw in the towel, and you don't want to keep trying for it anymore, or you get frustrated and you're, you're, the wind is taken out of your sails. So the future leaders are the girls that you want to stay on top of because they are your, your future leaders. And you want to remind them that there is a one-third third rule in this business. One-third coming in, one-third staying, one-third leaving. It's just the way it is. Um, just shoot for eight. Eight is great. If you get eight girls, you're going you're gonna to be moving along, and that is kind of the mindset you want to have with those future leaders, okay? So I'm just kind of touching on some of the topics that you could talk about or have as a theme in each of these groups, okay? And then your leaders or anyone that has over that many consultants, so over five or six, or maybe you want to say directors and above or seniors, directors and above. Now, for those of you that don't have any of them, have no directors, no senior directors, that's okay. Still make your Facebook group. Still start your little file if you want to use paper because you're putting it in the universe that someday you will have a leader, okay? So just make your group and, and get ready to have it there. So your leader group, uh, my leader group is more a Q&A place. It's a place where we talk to each other as leaders, like, hey, this is what's going on with my team. What would you do? Um, we do Darren Hardy daily together there. Um, we have a weekly call that we record right on Zoom. And for the leaders that can't get on, because I do have quite a few leaders actually that still do have full-time day jobs, we, we post the replay right in that group, right on Facebook. So they can go back and watch and hear what we talked about and also comment on it, okay? So um, I'm sorry, Heather. Is my phone ringing through this? No. Okay. Okay, good. I don't have to get distracted if you, that you don't hear it then. Okay. Because uh, it goes through my, I, my computer. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. Um, all right. So leaders are, again, it's more of a, a flowing place to share information. And one of the things that I really try to hammer home with my leaders is that we're peers. Okay. This isn't a group. This isn't a Jenny Harrison show when we're in the leader group. We are peers. I am not better than them. They are not better than me. We are there to learn from each other and to share information. And if one leader takes the lead that week and she's talking about bookings for an hour, that's a-okay -okay with me, okay? Um, because we're peers. That's super important to remember. And same with my future leader group. I tell them we're peers. Now with my um, business builders and my new consultants, I'll interview some of my new girls on our weekly call and I'll say, hey, you know, we have Alicia so-and-so on the call and she's doing amazing and I will just start on the fly, interview her, like, what are you doing? How are you getting bookings? Because I think it's really exciting to hear what other new people are doing in those groups or even the struggles that they're having. When you break these people out into these smaller groups, this crazy thing happens. They start talking to you. Uh, when all my, our team is the gems, and when everybody's in the gems, things get taken the wrong way, or too many people are talking at once, and it's overwhelming, and, and nobody talks, especially if they're new. I, I never would see new girls chiming in. But you know what? If I've got a new girl who's a regional sales director for our tractor company, do you think she has something to offer her as a, as a salesperson to our conversation? She does, but she's frightened. She doesn't want to speak in the group because she doesn't feel she has something of value to say. So by breaking them into the smaller groups, you're creating almost a safety zone where you're going to find that your, your new consultant group is maybe at any given time, 10 or 15 girls in a 90 day period, right? So that's a much smaller group where they feel comfortable talking to one another. Business builders, I'm not going to lie to you ladies, uh, it's the hardest group to motivate. And if you're watching this and you're a business builder, do the work, okay? <laughs> because <laughs> that's why you're not going anywhere, all right? I'm not trying to be mean, but it's true, girl. Take, you know, don't be a jack of all trades, master of none, okay? Do the work. Just get it done. So business builders are generally the hardest group to motivate, and it is because they have other things on their plate. They have a job. They have kids. And, you know, I was a business builder once, too. I get it. But just, you know... 
know that they're harder to motivate if you're a leader listening to this call. If you are a business builder, help your leader out. Do a little work, mama. I love you. Okay, next is future leaders. Um, and future leaders, again, our group there, they're striving to be the next level. They're striving to make leader. They want to be on the board of the gems. And the board of the gems is the leaders. Okay, that is how you're on the board, period. You have to be a leader. Now, here's the other thing, ladies. Because this is about accountability, if you lose someone or something happens, you can roll back to another group, okay? And let me tell you, when that happens, you are depressed, okay? Your consultant is depressed. So it, you're seeing it, and it's almost really amazing for me because I get to see it faster than I ever have. You know, if I, she knows she's about to roll back from future leaders back to business builders, she'll come to me now and be like, hey, I'm about to roll back. Where before, I wouldn't know it was happening until it actually happened. I don't know if you ever had that experience, Heather. Yeah. Like, no idea they were rolling back because, you know, you just got a thousand things on your plate. So now they're coming to me. I'm about to roll back. And we can work together as a team to make sure she doesn't roll back and, and some strategies to stay where she is. So, again, it's all about working with your first downline. And I just got to get back to the point of it, ladies, is those girls sign with you because they love you and they want – your attention and you have to give it to them you know and by doing it this way they're getting you on the weekly call if you decide to do one you don't have to do a weekly call for an hour with every group you could do a one hour a week with 15 minutes for each group you can do it however you want to do it all right um, now in addition to this I do recommend you still do leader calls and future leader calls um, but um, I'm sorry somebody's knocking on my door Heather you're good <laughs> Can you pause or no? Yeah. No, just keep going. You're, it's good. Okay. I'll okay. talk to them for a second. Okay, thanks. Go ahead. Um, girls, just to clarify, because um, you may, you may um, be wondering if this is kind of out of left field. I'm really just trying to wrap my head around making sure that those who are ready to lead and excited to lead feel empowered to do so, because I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes. Um, and those who are not ready because they're still learning the business or they're overwhelmed or whatever it is, they know that they have resources as well. So that's kind of where this is all coming from. Um, and you know, the thing is that I only know what you girls tell me. So if you don't tell me that you're ready to lead or you don't tell me, Hey, it's okay. I've got this covered for my team. Then I'm, I am currently mentally in the same place that Jenny was when she was like, okay, well there are, underneath me and my first four downlines and I feel responsible and I want to make sure that everybody is getting all the information that they need. And frankly, I'm being paid to some extent on all of these girls. So aren't I responsible? Um, and I'm not at all trying to shirk that responsibility, but I definitely feel as though many of you girls who are leaders in title are not leading for some reason, whether it's a comfort level or you feel like you're stepping on toes or you're just not sure how to start or whatever it is. So I really would like to work more closely with those who are interested in legitimately leading their girls um, to make sure that it's something that's comfortable and not overwhelming and that there is good structure because those that I know who have done this have seen exponential growth in a very short period of time, uh, which can be overwhelming if you're not well organized with it. So don't hesitate to reach out to myself or Jenny or, or frankly, any good team leader that you look up to and ask her how she structures it. Um, you know, of course I have the first downline group that's just for my love, my, my daughters. Um, but you can also obviously do this the, the way that Jenny has done it with the four different levels. So it's, it's, it's a great structure. All right, carry on. Okay. Did you want to ask me another question since I'm so sorry. I, somebody just came to my door. Oh, no worries. Life happens. Okay. <sighs> All right. So um, as you mentioned, if somebody is in your leader group, somebody's a director and they fall to senior consultant, they end up moving to the future leaders group again. Correct. Um, and that is done real time. Like first of the month, we adjust Correct. to those. Mm -hmm. um, what if somebody in your first level has gotten to 90 days and she simply is not ready or she says to, I'm not ready to like leave the nest. Like what, what do you do? How do you manage that? Okay. So I actually have a new girl who is killing it. She's doing great sales and recruiting. She's been in a month. Um, so what I did was I kept her in the new person group, but I also moved her to future leaders group. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I've let her know, you know, Shannon, when you feel comfortable enough, we'll take you out of the other group. Perfect. Okay. 
Good. So easy breezy. Okay, so for the girls who are watching this that currently are hovering right at um, or before director or who have, you know, seven to ten people on their team, do you recommend still doing the four groups, even if there's one person in that group? Yes. Because here's why. That one person earned that spot and she deserves that training. Got it. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Um, now, as far as uh, structuring your time, because I know you do this full time, I do this full time. And I will tell you that most of my leaders work a full time job. And many of them are pretty intense full time jobs where they're traveling or they're, you know, it's more than just clock in, clock out, eight to five. So, how do you budget your time? in the week in these groups? Like how would you prioritize where your time is being spent? Okay, I would like to address this as a full-time mom, full-timer, and also as someone who worked 100 jobs, okay? So as a full-time mom currently, what I did, ladies, is I hired a babysitter who's here with me once a week, she's here right now, and um, I literally, I have, she's here for four or five hours and I let the girls know it's Wednesday at, you know, one is new consultants, two is a business builders, three is future leaders and four o'clock is leaders. Okay. That's it. And that's every week, every week. Now we're off this week because Sydney's going back to school and I'm traveling. Um, but you know, because we have open lines of communication, I'll say, I said, you know, if there's anything else you guys need, you need help, let me know. And I'm here for you. Okay. Now, as a full work full time, when I used to implement this system, I would do it on Sunday, okay, because I had Sundays off. Now, if you don't have Sunday off, that's okay. Pick whatever day works for you, and I would literally smash it down to 15-minute increments, okay? So I'd spend 15 minutes on future leaders, 15 minutes on leaders, 15 on new consultants, and 15 on um, business builders. If you have a topic that is longer, let's say you want to talk for an hour about bookings, Record the call in the middle of the night on free conference call, okay? Or record it on Zoom in the middle of the night and put it up on the group the next morning, all right? These, especially video studies show that when they see the video, they actually feel like they're getting you in person, even though it's not real time. It's still a more of a connection than listening to a recorded call. So I highly encourage video whenever possible. But if you can't do it, you can't do it. And girls, you don't have to be perfect on video every time. Look at Heather and I today. I mean, Heather looks oh, that's exactly right. right. You know, she looks gorgeous. But just get it done. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There you go. <laughs> just get it done. Get it done when you can get it done. You know, if you're a second in an airport and, a, and an idea strikes you, take a video, you know, take a cell, we have cell phones, video yourself in the airport talking about that topic and pop it onto a group when the, when the, 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 the muse hits you, so to speak, but you know, be flexible. Um, understand that if you do work another job that this can be flexible, but I also want you to set expectations and boundaries. Okay. You know, you guys, some of you may be sitting here thinking, Oh, I don't have an hour to dedicate to talk to my team, right? I'm busy. I have all these things going on. I promise you, you're spending more time talking to them now because you're answering them at 10 at night, 7 in the morning, or 3 a.m., okay? Just set the, set the expectations, set the boundaries. This is when I'm available. This is when I'm not available. You want my time. I'm available on Wednesdays. This is when you can get me. Because guess what? I had three girls say to me when I did start this, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to be on. Okay, no worries. I record it. You can listen to it later. Well, guess who took their lunch break at that time to be on? because they don't want to miss anything, okay? We get so wrapped up in it has to be on their schedule. You're the leader, it's your time too. You have a family, you have uh, other responsibilities in your life, all of you ladies do. You know, just set, set, the, set the boundaries. I don't want to get on a tangent about that, because I can't. <laughs> Listen, I love that word. Yeah. Um, so content-wise, how are you structuring what you're talking to each of these groups about every week? Okay. So my new consultant group, like right now, we are doing like things on the COO. Like for instance, I have new girls that you do party school, but they still don't know where to find cue cards. Okay. So today's topic is going to be where to find cue cards or what is the inventory credit program? So think about the things that you'd want to know when you were new. 
All right, that's the best way to put it. So you could do a well, you know, I always welcome the new girl to the new group. All right, now if you want to go old school and you don't want to do Facebook groups, you can send a welcome letter. Okay, um, but you know, I it's technology, 2015. Use it. All right, so welcome her to the group. Um, you could have a checklist that you post up. These are some things you should try to complete. Get through party school. Order your business cards. Now party school does all that for you, but for some reason I'm still finding that they're not getting some of it done. So just gentle reminders. Another thing I love to do is post when you finish consultant 101 in party school. Show me a picture, okay? And they will. And I'll say something like, hey, you never know. I may give you a prize, you know? Um, if everyone posts in this thread who's done with party school, show me a picture of what you did. I'll throw out a prize. Just, um, and then a new start checklist. I'm sure you guys still have those hanging around from 100 years ago. That's another good idea. You don't have to post them in the groups, but use them as guidelines of what you're going to talk about with your team. That's your topic that week. You know, it's bookings. It really should be book, sell, share, repeat. That's it. Okay, that's what you should be doing with new people over and over and over for that first 90 days. Um, and invest in some training programs. Learn um, Belinda Ellsworth. I mean, she had a fabulous example of, you know, have her set up her coming out party and then challenge her to book two more parties before her coming out party. And guess what? Now your consultant has three parties to put in my parties, and now she's eligible for inventory credit if she's active. Mm -hmm. So these are the kinds of topics that you could be thinking about with new consultants, okay? Got it. Now your business builders are going to be the girls like, okay, these are generally the girls that will always come to you and say, I'm working my business and it's not working, right? Something's wrong or I can't figure it out. So you, this is going to be more problem-solving topics, okay? So you've tried Meetup. You've tried this. Why don't you do this instead, all right? Um, and also be held, holding people a little bit more accountable in this group because this is the group where you're going to see the highest drop-off, okay? Um, so you want to have topics that speak to that, to you know, staying active, to getting more bookings. More importantly, to stop starting in their business, like stop, start, stop, start. They need to stop doing that. A lot of your business builders are doing that all the time. And that's why they're in this continual cycle of non, no success because they're stopping, they're starting, they're stopping and they're starting. So it's really good to focus your stuff on. This is how to have one party a week. This is how to have two parties a week. This is how to keep your business moving all the time. All yeah. right. So that's what I would do with um, business builders and also, of course, encouraging them to recruit, to start building their own team. Because once they start building their team, they're going to become more invested in the business in general. Okay? So, again, steady at any topics is the best way to put it. And maybe even going back to their original goal sheet. You know, when you talk to a new person, you should be taking notes. You know, what is your goal? What do you want to earn in this business? You know, what is it that you want to provide for your family? So it's time to go back to that original goal sheet and say, you know, Heather, you told me when you started you wanted to take your kid to Disney. Well, you've had a chance to do that yet. No, I haven't. Well, have you priced that out yet? Do you know how much it costs to take a kid to Disney? No, I haven't. Well, let's take a second and do that. It's $2,000 per person to take somebody to Disney roughly, okay? So that means you have, you have a family of four. That's $6,000. Well, what's your party average, Heather? It's $500. It's $250 per show. You're only doing two a week. Disney's so far away right now. So now we've got a, you know, you've got a topic to help her with. But you want to be doing this live within the group, whether it's a video or a chat or a thread, because you will be shocked how many other women are in that group reading or listening or watching going, that's exactly what I wanted to talk about, right? And now you're not repeating yourself a thousand times a week. All right. So think about that. And I have offered with Heather too to kind of make just a quick and dirty bullet list of what you should maybe talk about with some of these groups um, based on Belinda's training. I can shoot that over to her later tonight and you guys could have that in your group. Um, so you kind of have some ideas. All right. Now your future leader group is generally going to probably be your smallest group, but they're your most special group. Okay, because they're not jaded yet, right? They're excited. They want to be a leader. They want to. They want to make it in this business. They want to make board. They they have the biggest dreams, and you want to encourage that and get them excited about their goals. But again, the biggest challenge for them is they're always afraid they're going to roll back, right? They're always focused on I'm going to lose my recruit. I'm going to fall back. I quit. I throw in the towel. It's not going to happen for me. Or worse. It doesn't matter if I make it or not. And guess what? They're just saying that because it does matter. 
So those are the kind of topics you want to focus on with future leaders, okay? Inspiring them, keeping their dreams going, shooting for that eight is great. Um, and, you know, I even find with some of my future leaders, even though we're focusing on team building and leadership, they still come back to some booking things and, rec and, and recruiting things. So don't, don't take those off the table either. If that's a topic they want to talk about that week, because it may be, maybe they're not having trouble with bookings, but they're having trouble teaching their team how to book. So that could be a topic for future leaders. Okay. And like I said, leaders is, um, is really just Q and a, it's really a uh, fluid. It's very open because I want, like I said, you want them to feel like your peer. You don't want to feel like their manager or their boss. Okay. Um, so those are just some quick and dirty tips about each group. Um, the logistics are that I have the four Facebook groups. Like I said, I do the once a week calls. They've been loving it. I've been seeing so many aha moments. And more importantly, ladies, I don't know about you, but as a leader, I used to do the uh, why did you start the business, getting down to their why. Do you remember that training 100 years ago? Mm -hmm. It was life-changing for me, that why. But here's what I found, being a leader doing the why. When I'm digging that deep with them and getting into that why, they're going into some horrible life story. I'm going to use my own, for example, being a child of a 16 year old mother. Okay. They're getting into this life story, right? About why they want to change their life. And what happens? You're the go-to person to talk to that about. And now you're their therapist and you're not talking about business. When you're talking, you're talking about this deep seated insecurity or something else that's going on in their life. So just drop, don't do it anymore. Instead, I want you guys working with their dreams and their goals, their dream to take their kid to Disney or their dream to have a savings account, or maybe it's to buy a second property. That's the stuff you guys should be focusing on. I don't want you guys going into that why anymore that a bit, you know, a bit build it big used to try to teach us 10 years ago. Um, get more into that dream. And there's a great book called the dream manager. I'm sure Heather's read it. Um, definitely read it. It's great. A great read for anyone. Super quick, super easy to read and super easy to understand. And once you start doing that with your team, and that's actually how I rolled my program out. I started with a call about the dream manager and what their dreams were and asking them if they would help me hold other people accountable to their dreams. And then this is how we're going to do it. We're going to break out into these groups. So I think that's something that I need to share with you. That's a great way to roll out the program, ladies. Okay. So um, I think my last question for now is what is the difference between the content that you share in your full team group versus what's going on in each individual group? So are you far less visible in your big team group? Like, is that more for everybody else? Yeah, my, my GEMS group, we have um, currently, and I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think we have 312 people on our team. I think there's some lurkers in there, but we have about 309 active people right now. So they're all in that group. And that group runs itself. I mean, it literally is like, hey, I'm a person, I have a question, and everybody answers. So it's, it's pretty autopilot. Um, I have what I call the mama bear post in there, what the rules and regulations are of the group. Occasionally, I have to bump it. Um, but it, we have been so harmonious for 12 years. I'm really blessed in that way. Um, so it's pretty easy, pretty easy going group. Um, you know, things, do things come up because we're a bunch of women with different opinions and personalities? Absolutely. But it's pretty autopilot. Um, so yeah, the answer, the, lo the long answer to your question, it, I just gave to you, <laughs> the short answer is yeah, I let it run itself and I'm, I'm less visible there and I'm focusing more on these four groups. Got it. Okay. Is there anything else that you think is, um, super, super important or was a light bulb moment for you and putting all this together that would benefit these girls? Yes. I was just like you when I heard it, I was not sure if it was going to work for me. Um, and I just bit the bullet and said, I'm going to do this because I need to do something. I was getting to the point where I was getting messages all the time. Like, when can you talk to me? When can we talk about this? And I was cringing knowing that the thing we were going to be talking about wasn't business. It was their marital problems, you know, and I don't have time for that. I'm not trying to be mean. It doesn't mean I don't love someone because I love everyone on my team, but I just, I don't have time, you know, and I didn't think it was going to work for me. And once I implemented it, it's, um, it's been over a month now and it's a weight off my shoulders. And that was the aha moment. The aha moment was I don't know everything, 
I've been in for 12 years. I can still learn something. And I'm not the end all for my team. And I think that was also a huge pressure off my shoulders because we are all adults. And we, my job is to coach, to teach in the game. It's their job to play it. And that's, that's the attitude that I've taken. And it's working so far. And with all of that said, you guys can interview me a year from now. And I may have changed my ideas again, you know, the sign of a good leader ladies is to be fluid and to be constantly learning and trying new things to see what works for you and your team. I hope this does work for you and your team the way it is working for ours. We are sitting at uh, just about $1.7 million as of today. I'm pretty excited. And um, so I just telling you that not to brag though I am excited, but I want you to know that we have a big team. We're not just like a little $200,000 team that, Oh, it's easy because she has a small team. We don't have a small team. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I hope that helps you guys and just, you know, give it a whirl, you know, give it a whirl for 90 days and see what you think. You know, don't try it for one week and, and give up. You got to work some kinks out. There's always going to be kinks. Like maybe learning Zoom, that was a huge kink for me. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, you want me to what? Zoom? What Zoom? <laughs> so, you know. Uh, speaking of that, I actually do have one more question that just popped into my head. Yeah. So when you do these um, weekly calls, are you doing them through freeconferencecall.com? Zoom. You're doing them in Zoom. Yeah. And Zoom. how are you then sharing them? Where are they okay. posted? Right into the group on Facebook. So okay. when you're done with your Zoom call, it's going to ask you to you, you know, it's going to ask you to download it for those of you that have never used it. Um, and I believe it's the MP4 version is the one that you can share, um, and it has video. Um, but remember, they don't allow more than 45 minutes. So I will select 45 minutes for my Zoom but I will not uh, go the full 45 minutes. Got it. Okay, otherwise yeah. you gotta drop box that puppy. Um, is there any kind of a time limit on it to create a sense of urgency for them to actually watch it? Or are they just out? Um, no, I just put it out there because you know, sometimes the girl's gonna roll up to another group and she missed that call that was awesome on how to deal with a, you know, a woman that's causing strife within the team, for example, that was our topic last week. Um, so, you know, I can say, Hey, you know, we did that on August 17th. It was the August 17th call. Go ahead and look that one up and, and watch it. And that's where you have to text her and say, Hey, did you get a chance to watch it? Or what did you think of that? You know, a little accountability, or if you're busy and it's 3 a.m. Cause you have a job or you're traveling and you're in an airport again, tag her. Hey, Jenny Garrison Harrison, did you watch this? And let her respond because again, it becomes this weird accountability thing. They don't want to be tagged and not have an answer. <laughs> And uh, do you find that in your groups, and I mean literally all of them, that there's a, a method that is more effective to get them posting and sharing as opposed to you constantly posting and them responding? Yes. For me, I started talking to my leaders about posting and sharing. So it started with the leaders. And I basically said, look, you guys are leaders. Some of you are president's club members. Some of you are board members. And again, this is where, as a leader, you've got to take your ego and step back. This isn't the Jenny show. Yeah, it's called the Gems, um, but it's not, it's not my group. I'm nobody without my team. So that's what I said to my leaders. I'm nobody without you. I need you. <laughs> and I do need them. Without them, I have nothing. So um, I wanted them to take the reins. And, you know, the next leader call, I would say, hey, you know, Meg, I didn't really see you on the group this week. I need you participating more. And in doing that, what I found was they were doing that to their team too. And it's just kind of spread like wildfire. Um, I've got girls that have been in three months answering questions about bookings. Now that's a catch 22, as we all know, um, because, you know, she could be versed in bookings, but three months in, she could also give the wrong advice. So um, the key is also not to say that is wrong or, you know, to belittle them in any single way. You could say, you know, Courtney, that was an awesome idea. I love what you said there, but to expand on it, I'd like to add this, okay? I know that seems like remedial management 101, but it, it, we get caught up sometimes in the emotion of seeing a post and you're like, oh my God, that's the wrong answer and you react. Always take a step back and think about the political way to answer the question because you don't want to squash anyone's fire either. If she enjoys sharing and she enjoys leading and she enjoys doing all of that, by you, if you snap her, you shut her down, you just lost a future leader. She's going to be like, oh my God, you know, Jenny squashed me. Forget it. I'm never posting again. And you just put her, her spark out that could turn into this beautiful wildfire. So we don't want to do that. Got it. All right, good. Well, okay. I think that has been super, super helpful. I know it's helpful for me. I took some fun notes. Um, okay. 
just because I'm, I'm all about structure. So it just makes it easier for me to um, wrap my head around it. And while I have never worked another full-time job while I do this, you know, you, you know, I um, have an insane schedule with my children and my husband mm -hmm. travels for a living and I'm a corporate trainer and um, trying to still have a life and some personal time uh, to not constantly feel like I'm working so that um, the leaders that are watching realize that it doesn't have to be two full-time jobs simultaneously, that you legitimately can work this along with anything else. You can. absolutely can. And I'm speaking to you girls that are leaders that have jobs because I was you until 2010. So from 2003 until 2010, I had two other full-time jobs. Um, and even today, even though I'm a full-time mom, and I do pure romance. My husband and I invest in flip properties and my husband just opened his own mortgage branch and, branch and I helped him with that as well. So, you know, you can sit back and assume, oh, that person has nothing else on their plate when just ask, you know, assumptions are bad. They make asses out of you and me. So you want to make sure that you ask, you know, what are you doing? You'd be surprised how much people have going on in their lives and they're making this work. For sure. And be open and receptive. You know, that was my, I think what made me successful when I had other jobs is that I took the time, even if it was at one in the morning to get things done. Um, but I also would make time for my job, like for pure romance back then, I would yeah. say, you know, Wednesday, my lunch break at work, I'm going to my car with my cell phone and my hostess coaching, and I'm going to call everybody. And on Thursday, I'm going to call my team on my lunch break, even if it was just leaving a message. Okay. So don't, you know, utilize your work time. You get a lunch break. You can program phone numbers into your phone and call people while you're driving. If you have a commute, man, you guys live in the Washington area. No, thank you on the traffic. You probably sit there for two hours someday. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, thank right. you. So use it, make it your mobile office, call people, do stuff. Okay? I 100% agree. Yes. All right. All right. All right good. Thank, you. thank you for spending time with me. My pleasure. I'm super, super excited to have you um, as a guest star this week. So uh, I'm sure that we're going to be seeing lots more of you and uh, girls that are watching this. Remember, you are welcome to comment uh, both here on the group as well as under the, the YouTube post if that's easier for you. So whatever works best, go ahead and do it. We love the interaction. Thanks, y'all. Bye.